Welcome along. I'm going to talk about the loudness thing today. Somebody said you should use a dynamic or a loud master, and it depends what it's going to be for. And here's why. There are two situations. Are you in control of the situation or out of control of the situation? On YouTube and many streaming surfaces, you are not in control of the situation. The minus 14 LUFS rule is in place and everything sounds sort of the same volume, doesn't it? So that's great. So therefore you would use the dynamic version suited to that level. Everything's fine. And actually when you make a loud master it, Beyond that point, it, things just get worse quality. Nothing really improves. You're just clipping and limiting things more. So why would you use that? The job of A&R isn't so much about music. It's saying to the investors, which are the label, can you get a product which will make us money? Okay, so A&R aren't really concerned with music. They do get involved with music, almost by accident nowadays. When a demo comes into them, they play it on a system, and if they haven't adjusted the volume, a loud master will sound much better to them than a dynamic master. And I will give you a di two direct examples which... Subscribe! I know of. In 2017, but some of the work was in 2016, we mixed Pure Garage, and one of the tracks we did for that was with Karen Harding. They were unsure about an edit of um, After a Breakdown, so all the versions up to this point had been rough masters, just so they could hear it back. But just to check this one bit, I changed it how we thought it should be, and then sent it over to them. The guy called up, and this is an eight-minute conversation, and said... Something's gone wrong. Um, your production's gone really downhill. You, you're, you're producing really well. And then you, somehow you've completely lost it now. Then we realised that he didn't understand that, that the unmastered one would, would be quieter. And we were just showing it for arrangement purposes. So that was one really weird example. The other thing um, is that if you work in the commercial sector, we had one on Relentless, part of Sony. And once done the mix down, they said, send us the stems so we can mix it down. OK, so we did. And the demo of the mix down comes through completely hard limited. And that's for the same reason as A&R guy. Basically, if they're playing tracks, they want to hear it back loud. And if the mix comes back and it's not loud, they say, oh, this mix isn't as good as the other mixes that we've heard from other studios. So they have to have it loud. And they're playing something in an office. There probably is a volume knob. So it comes out at the same volume. So number one, A and R is a reason that you need loud masters. Radio meetings are done in the same way. At Radio 1 there's a meeting and everyone sits around and they play records. So if your record comes out very quietly compared with someone whose record comes out very loudly, um, they wouldn't get it. Bandcamp doesn't change the volume between things. So if you were flicking through Bandcamp and you had a quiet master, then it wouldn't be as loud as a loud one. You could use the volume, but people don't understand volume, as we've discussed. The next one is absolutely huge, and it is clips on music selling websites. So let's go and find some clips on music selling websites to demonstrate this. OK, so one of the big things is the thing where DJs are going to go through and select records and what they sound like to them. There's obviously two stages to this. It's when they select them on Beatport or Juno. All of the clips are at different levels and that continues on into the club where um, nowadays DJs don't really move their gains around as much as they used to with quiet and loud recordings. I've seen, I've seen a lot of DJs on live streams and live things and I don't see them moving the gain, they sort of trust the master. So here's the difference between um, some tracks, so the Big Easy by Claptone, then I'm going to try and edit the gap, so I immediately play something else. When you're listening through, you're listening to hundreds of records in a row. 
um, being the quiet one really isn't cool. So the question is, which should you use, a dynamic or a loud master? Well, actually, on distribution, you can choose to send your records to the streaming site as one part of your release and the download site as another. Very few people do that, and therefore, because of the importance of DJing, A&R, radio, that you end up using the loud master, so that's really the answer to the question. But when you're editing a video for Ed Sheeran, there should be a copy of the master where it just doesn't use the limiting if you get to the required level, which it definitely is. So um, in Ed Sheeran's case where he's got a distorted recording on a video, there was just no need for that on YouTube because he could have used a much less pushed master. So right-clicking Ed Sheeran's bad habits. There are some bad habits here with the loudness. <laughs> 5.7 dB louder than it needs to be. And I think other people have commented on this as a particularly bad quality um, record. We'll just play this bit which says, and then it all got dark. And this is so damaged that it, the kick drum just distorts here. And it's surprising because um, this must have gone through a mix process, a demo for a master, the mastered version, and then that's gone through Ed Sheeran's team, which must include Ed Sheeran, his manager. The mastering guy must have heard it. So really important stuff here. Nobody really noticed that Ed Sheeran's track is distorted, or many of Ed Sheeran's tracks are distorted. But you can see that the mastering chain there is being backed into a corner where they require the Ed Sheeran thing to be really, really loud. The general public, um, the consumers, don't seem to have a massive problem with the loud mastering, apart from when they actually like records and listen to them carefully. So I suppose the most intent, the most into it listeners get the worst results <laughs> through loud mastering. And one of our quietest Masters is called See You in June. Oh, we were sad and scared. So on YouTube, the regular version of this says um, content loudness 0.2 dB. So it's, it's almost bang on the um, dynamic thing, which we did on purpose. And that's streamed really, really well. So um, you don't have to have things really loud if it's listening music. If you're your own label, which 4 is on its own label, Yosh, um, then the A&R can be having a discussion in the same room as the producer, mastering engineer. And then you're not having to impress A&R. When the mix is done, it doesn't have to be hard limited to impress the... Um, <laughs> we're impressing ourselves. Um, and then it goes off to the label who are able to use whatever master they want and then that can go for streaming. Yes, so this is now two years and a half almost old and it's done 4,454,795 plays and it was done at a dynamic level. So that's um, kind of good news for the dynamic thing. So um, so there's, there's bad news really because I've started a video and I've said should you use dynamic or loud said all the reasons for using loud, but apart from when you don't, and then I suppose that only leaves DJs. So if you're not on a label and it's listening music, and you don't have to put up with DJs, um, then, then you can use a dynamic master and everything really is fine. I think you do need a loud master for DJs. Um, and it's only the lack of understanding from A&R um, and could DJs use a gain knob and when they hear a quiet one turn the volume up on what they're listening on? I think that's unfair because the subtle sort of impact would be it wouldn't work. But in conclusion, <laughs> I have no idea what you should do um, at any stage of your music career. So um, do subscribe to my channel. <laughs>